This program is brought to you by the Stanford Humanities Center. For more information, please visit us at shc.stanford.edu. My current research is on citizenship in France and French Africa between 1945 and 1960. This was a period when all the people in Africa who had previously had the status of being subject of France, that is people who were part of the French system but were not, did not have the rights of the citizen, after 1946 they became citizens. So the question that I'm interested in is what does it signify to have this kind of citizenship that was not geared to a nation but was part of an empire, of a kind of imperial citizenship. I was drawn to that topic out of earlier research that I'd done on questions of labor in French and British Africa. And I was interested in the fact that after World War II and after the French Constitution incorporated this notion of imperial citizenship, uh, African trade unions and, and African politicians based their claims for better wages, for better working conditions, for better social benefits on the, on the argument that they were citizens of France like any other. I've done very detailed work on the Constitution of 1946 and the politics behind it, how Africans were in a position to make certain demands, uh, including that for, for citizenship, during the context of the French government's reconsideration of how it should be organized, how the relationship of colonies, what were once called colonies, uh, renamed overseas territories, what they should be to European France. Then the, then the next part of the project will be to look at the politics of citizenship after the new constitution. And I argue that citizenship is a claim-making construct, that people use it to get certain things. It's less interesting to ask what is citizenship than to ask how is citizenship used. And it was used, first of all, for the kinds of things that I just talked about, social and economic claims, the claims to equivalence, uh, that the citizens of, of this greater France who are African should have the same kinds of social and economic uh, resources available to them, the same kinds uh, of industrial relations systems applied to them as should white French people from uh, Paris or Lyon. Uh, then I want to look at how the political institutions of France were called into, into question uh, and all the inadequacies of the 1946 Constitution became objects of claim making too. And then it, the project is going to, to end up with a look at the political dilemmas of this very construct uh, of a greater France, an imperial uh, France. For I'm, I'm going to suggest that one of the reasons why the French government started to th rethink its position as uh, the ruler of territories in, in Africa and other overseas areas was that it couldn't control the process of claim making in the name of citizenship. That the citizenship was actually too effective a construct. That Africans and others were able to make effective demands that were exceedingly expensive. And by the mid-1950s, the, the French government was, was realizing either it had, to, uh, it had to give up this unifying notion of inclusion within a greater France, or it was going to have to pay the bills to make the theoretical equality into something real. And by the mid-50s, it was gradually giving up on the project of holding together this unified France. This whole project derives from a questioning of one of the major narratives of, of history, that the world once was divided into, in, into a series of empires. And between the 18th and the 20th century, that this gave way steadily to a world divided into nation states. I think this narrative is much too simple. And part of the, what the current project does is look how alive various forms of political organization were in the period, in the second half, beginning of the second half 
of the 20th century. Not just that one had a choice between colonial empire and nation states, but there are ways of transforming empire into other things, into political entities that remain supranational, that, that were not limited to people who claim to, to a political structure where everybody claimed to be one people, one nation, uh, but had various uh, forms that were, were possible. So the project examines not only empire as empire, but possible transformations of empire into other kinds of political structures, like federation or confederation. What is surprising in this story is the viability of, of a variety of contents. What, what not only historians, but journalists and, and, and certainly politicians have tended to do is to write history backwards. So we have a present in which one considers we, that we have a very French France. Uh, and that that France was, was a, something that, that it had to be the way it is. Uh, and what I'm trying to show is that there was a really high level of uncertainty and disagreement over what France should be in this period uh, coming after the great crisis of, of World War II and France's defeat in that, in that law, uh, the possibility that it was going to lose its overseas territories, all this forced a considerable uh, uh, uncertainty, and in which there, there, were, there was conflict, in some cases violent conflict, notably in, in Vietnam and Al in Algeria, and in, and in French West Africa, it opened up a considerable space for political mobilization, political creativity around possible forms of changing a polity but not limited to the, the, the stark option between a colonial uh, empire and a unitary nation state. That, though, that range of options has largely been written out of French history and French politicians' conceptions of what France is in favor of a very uh, unified perception of what a French republic is, has always been, and always must be. Uh, my project tries to open up the space that has been closed down by this backward projection of a very national France. Like most scholars, including historians, what inspires us to ask the kinds of questions we do are various. One are the kinds of relatively narrow disputes and trends within our own discipline. But the other is what's going on around us. We are we live in the present even if we write about the, the past, but one of our advantages as historians is, is, is we know that people did things differently at different times. Uh, and it's that quest to, to apply this notion of people doing different things in different contexts and in different places. That it, the world is not a uniform place. The vision that I have is not what other people have. Uh, it's not what my own ancestors had in their, in their own past. And trying to, to, to see what that exploration of, uh, of change, of difference, of alternative possibilities uh, means for particular historical subjects of inquiry. That's what, uh, what I've been trying to do. This program is brought to you by the Stanford Humanities Center. For more information, please visit us at shc.stanford.edu.